Hello traders. Welcome to your Follow the Bots S&P 500 Daily Market Recap, sponsored by Zaner. Since 1980, Zaner has been helping futures, commodity, and forex traders trade smarter, faster, and easier. Hello traders. Bill Durier here with Follow the Bots. Welcome to the Daily Market Recap a detailed review of the market structure and the key support and resistance levels in the S&P 500 E-mini. Today is Wednesday, September 11th, 2013. Since breaking out above 1670 and auctioning back into the upper trade cluster, S&P futures are on a path to auction up at or near the multi-year high at 1705. The rally, which began following Friday's close at 1653 and accelerated during Sunday's Globex session with the S&P auctioning above the prior week's high, continued on Tuesday and then again during today's session. S&P futures have now traded up at or near the next resistance levels, which are located at 1693 and 1696 of the upper trade cluster. When S&P futures traded up to the current multi-year high at 1705, the market failed to attract buying interest. After trading for two days in a narrow range, the S&P sold off from the high, trading down at or near prior support at 1675. Following the sell-off, the S&P attempted to retest the high, trading up to 1696. That attempt also failed to attract new buying interest, and the S&P once again traded down to 1675. Following that sell-off, the market made one additional attempt, trading up to 1693. It was the third failure that resulted in the S&P selling down through minor support at 1670 and auctioning back into the prior trading range and eventually selling down to 1624-1625. At the end of August, after spending four days at the low, the market established a new base of support and has auctioned back up through the trading range. The S&P has now begun its recovery rally ahead of the next FOMC announcement due to be released on September 18th. While the financial media is full of exuberance regarding the current rally, and they are quick to express the sentiment that the S&P will go on and trade up to the multi-year high and make another higher high, and that the uptrend will continue forever. There is no evidence in the historic record where a market has not sold down from its multi-year high. Even during bull market phases, pullbacks of 10% or back to the 200-day price average are common occurrences. Just as the S&P sold down from its most recent multi-year high, and declined 81 points, approximately 4.7%. So the fate of the market, should it go on to make a new multi-year high, is likely to follow the same course of development that occurred following the rally to 1705 on August 2nd. The only factor that justifies the this time it will be different argument is that on September 18th, the Federal Reserve is likely to announce a reduction in its extraordinary, unconventional, 
accommodative monetary policy, otherwise known as quantitative easing. The Fed policy, which has been executed by purchasing $85 billion a month in U.S. Treasuries, amounts to a debasing of the U.S. dollar. While shrouded in fancy terms like quantitative easing, the policy amounts to printing money. Every time a central bank prints money, it devalues the currency. The main reason for the asset appreciation that we have seen during the financial crisis is primarily attributed to the massive increase in the money supply. Assets have gone up not because they are intrinsically worth more. They have gone up because the dollar is worth less. It is widely expected that when the Fed announces the reduction in its bond purchasing program, there will be an immediate short-term negative reaction. My comments are not the comments of someone who believes in gloom and doom, nor do I think the S&P will turn around and sell off to the levels it traded at during 2008. I am simply pointing out the common facts that all markets pull back from their multi-year highs and that following the Fed announcement, we are likely to see a similar occurrence. As the current rally has assumed an exponential component since gapping up above Friday's close at 1653, we would expect to see the market exhaust its upward momentum at or near the 1693-1697 price level. Coming into today's session, we noted in our daily market briefing that minor support was located at Tuesday's low at or near 1677-1676. We expected to see the market auction above yesterday's high and attempt to rally up to 1693 1697 the minor support level at 1677 1676 is structurally the weakest support level near term support is down at where the rally began off of friday's close at 1653 however 1670 1668 is the current midpoint of the recovery rally. It is also associated with the prior resistance level and it is the starting point of the upper trade cluster. Therefore, 1670 1678 is a forcing point. Those who missed the opportunity to get aboard the rally that today in the after hours traded up to 1690 are likely to be looking for the opportunity to buy the pullback. The 1670-1668 price level is structurally more sound than the minor support level at today's low equal to the low developed on Tuesday. For a detailed review of today's market developments, we will focus our analysis on the micro five tick range chart. Plotted on this chart are several technical studies. The red and blue lines represent the polynomial regression channel. The orange line is the Kalman filter. The digital Gaussian filters are plotted with the red and yellow line. During the overnight session, the S&P traded in the same narrow range that had developed at Tuesday's close. The high was at or near 1683 and the low was down at or near 1680. At Wednesday's open, 
The S&P attempted to retest the overnight high, but as price auctioned up at or near 1683, the computerized trading algorithms ceased executing to the buy side. The order flow monitor detected buy programs waning, accompanied with a high-frequency sell response. The five-tick range bars began to overlap, and the Gaussian digital filters turned down. The S&P pulled back at or near yesterday's low at 1677. During the pullback to yesterday's low, the high-frequency computerized algorithms ceased executing to the sell side. Once again, the micro 5-tick range series began to overlap. The Gaussian digital filters turned up. Price auctioned above the value of the Kalman estimate. And an exponential up move began wherein the S&P retested the overnight high and traded up to 1686. During the rally to 1686, the high-frequency computerized trading algorithms ceased executing to the buy side, and the market went flat. Once again, you are looking at a narrow range development that occurred over the better part of two hours. During the narrow range development, the digital filters indicated that the slope of the execution sequence was biased to the upside. When traders came back from lunch, the market made another attempt to auction higher. But once again, the buy programs ceased to execute to the buy side and the order flow monitor detected buy programs waning followed by a high frequency sell surge. Price pulled back modestly to the value of the Kalman filter but then the sell programs turned off. Following the sell programs waning event, the S&P auctioned back up to retest the high and closed the session at the high, auctioning up just shy of 1690. Coming into Thursday session, minor support, the structurally weakest support level, is down at 1677, 1676. Resistance is located at the August highs at 1693 and 1697. That concludes our recap of the S&P 500 E-mini for this Wednesday, August 11th, 2013. If you would like to follow our real-time commentary, we invite you to visit us online at www.followthebots.com. Log on and join us some morning at the open. For more information regarding Zaner's brokerage services or the content of this broadcast, contact Neil Rogers, nrogers at zaner.com, 312-277-0135. This is Cuerva from Follow the Bots. Happy trading.